everybody and welcome or welcome back to the choose to think inspirational podcast we have a guest on the show today and her name is marnie swedberg fun fast-paced yet peaceful and approachable that's how she can be described marnie's history listen to this includes fires floods car wrecks business setbacks burglaries lightning strikes And in her immediate family, cancer, head injury, and sudden death. Oh my goodness. Some of you can probably relate to those kinds of challenges and hardships. Maybe not all of them, but certainly some of them. But Coach Marnie, or Mentor Marnie, I should say, Mentor Marnie Swedberg models comeback behavior, possibility thinking, and her profound faith. Matter of fact, just talking about her faith, some of the practical action items that she does daily, you're going to get some a boatload of ideas here and be encouraged and inspired maybe to begin some of those new habits even in your life so that you can step into I guess it's just a different way of doing life. You're going to see just in a matter of minutes how Marnie does her life. And it's kind of like, I think one word to describe her, if I had to do it, would be resilient. She has a resiliency that is very buoyant, though. It's very upbeat and joyful. And she's got a smile on her face. It is Christ in her, despite any circumstance or scenario. Marnie Swedberg is a missions ministry mentor, author of 14 how-to books, founder and director of womenspeakers.com, and host of the number one ranked blog talk radio show called Marnie's Friends. She homeschooled, I forgot to talk about homeschooling, the three Swedberg children from kindergarten through 12th grade. She managed the family businesses, a restaurant and a retail store, and she's helped launch and grow women-led businesses and ministries worldwide. In 2023, she hosted nine virtual women's summits. And I think you're going to want to go to her website right now. You can go to marnie.com, M-A-R-N-I-E.com to see the host, the slew of things that she has to offer you. I got to really talk to her specifically about some of the Choose to Think Inspirational Podcast ministry verses, which would be 2 Corinthians 10, 5, how God encourages us, tells us, admonishes us really to take every thought captive. And we also talked about Romans 12, 2, about being transformed by the renewing of our minds. And all that can kind of sound frou-frou in a way, but we're going to talk about the nuts and bolts of it and how to actually do that and what's on the other side of brain change. You know, we call ourselves brain changers, right? Because we know that our brains are changeable based on the thoughts that we think. Whatever we focus on grows. Whatever you are giving your mental and emotional energy toward is going to grow. It's going to be magnified. So we want to choose very carefully what we're focusing on, right? We also talk a little bit about the power of gratitude, but in between all of that, Marnie's going to leave you with a few word pictures. Matter of fact, one of my favorite analogies that she used in the interview, and I'm not going to give it away, but she talked about a dolphin and the abilities and what a dolphin does and how it can be kind of like us, like you as a Christ follower. So please give her some support, some love, show her some love, go visit her on her website. She has some free programs there. Visit her and subscribe to her YouTube channel. Make sure that you stay connected with her. Go to the Choose to Think Inspirational podcast community on Facebook. We have a community there and you can even dialogue with her there, chat with her a little bit, talk about the episode and your takeaways. So I appreciate that you are here. Thank you so much for pressing play on another episode of the Choose to Choose to Think Inspirational Podcast. And without further ado, here is mentor Marnie Swedberg. Marnie, welcome to the Choose to Think Inspirational Podcast. Oh, thanks. I'm so excited to be here. Yes. And I'm going to start with just asking you and inviting you to share a little bit about yourself, your story, and kind of how you got to be to where you are right now. 
Mm. Yeah, so everybody has a story. I was one of the privileged ones to be born into a family where the mom and dad loved each other, loved God, and loved us girls. I've got three sisters, and kind of by accident, actually them not knowing what they were doing, they named me Marnie Joy, and Marnie in Hebrew means joyful. So not knowing they were doing it, they named me Joyful Joy, and that's really my life. I love that. And that's who I am, people that know me. Uh, so it's really fun to walk with Jesus through life. And I met Christ when I was four years old. So I've just known him my whole life. And what a privilege that has been. Now, all that background and my life still isn't perfect. I really couldn't learn how to read um, as a child. I didn't learn how to read until I was an adult. So they just kept pushing me from grade to grade and I would just struggle along and do my best. But it was just really hard. And then as an adult out from under the pressures of school, I was able to my mind was able to relax enough so that I could read and I have gone on to write 14 books. And now I, te I teach authors and writers now uh, through virtual summits and online or on premise uh, programs how to write. And it's just such a miracle, whatever things you're challenged with in your life. God wants to take those exact challenges and use you uh, to do something different that other people haven't done before. And so I think, you know, through, I've got so many other stories I could tell about the challenges and how God has used those. But the main thing that I see about my life is the reason that I can do what I do, which is to mentor millions of women around the world, is because of the challenges I've had. Without those stories, without learning how to do things differently from other people, without learning how to see the world through a different lens than other people, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing today. And so I just encourage you, whatever you feel like is just your greatest weakness, you, your nemesis, you'll never get past that. I just want you to know that in there, kind of like in, um, in an oyster, how the pearl, it actually starts with an irritation, and that oyster just coats it and coats it and coats it until it becomes this beautiful pearl of great worth. And that's how our lives are. So anything that I've accomplished has come from irritation. <laughs> Right. And come from the faith, the faithfulness of God to take something that would look hopeless and useless and turn it into something good. Wow. Well, let's drill down just a little bit on that because I'm listening and I think, oh, it sounds so wonderful, but I know it's a little bit harder, harder to do than just to say right. that. So could you kind of speaking of challenges and goodness, when I read your bio, it is filled with so many challenges. And I would actually love to just pick apart each one of those because it sounds so <laughs> intriguing. But let's take a passage like Second Corinthians 10 5 about taking your thoughts captive just to kind of relate it back into what we try to do, my listeners and I are challenged. We call ourselves brain changers because we want to change the very yes. chemistry of our brain by the thoughts that we think. And certainly science will essentially support that kind of notion. But how have, you know, using that passage as a backdrop, how would you say that as a Christ follower, choosing to take your thoughts captive has maybe helped you as you face so many different challenges in your lifetime? I love that question, and I love that God has made our minds to be so incredibly powerful, yes. and I, I love the iceberg analogy where you've got most of what's happening in our mind yes. is happening subconsciously, unconsciously. We don't think about our eyelids blinking 10,000 times. You know, we don't think about any of these things. It's just happening, and in the background, they're also pounding away are the things that we have taught our mind to believe are true or are the most valuable things to us. So that when my conscious mind faces uh, something like, I want to make a new habit that breaks an old bad habit, I wanna replace it with a new habit, the unconscious mind is working at, you know, 20 million stimuli per second compared to the 40 stimuli of my conscious mind. And we have to literally um, recognize how our minds work in order to do this thing that you're talking about, this conscious awareness of God in our minds. And from the time that we were teeny tiny, you know, by the time we were two, we knew how to say me do it my way. <laughs> 
And right. we, we've been kind of on that plan ever since. So then when we say, no, I really want to do it with God, that mm -hmm. takes a lot of change. You've got millions of repetitions of me do it my way um, so without true. God. You know, and I remember one day, um, just as an example, I stood in front of my closet, I was in my 40s, and I stood in front of my closet, and I just said, so like, God, really, like, do you want to pick my clothes every day? Like, how much, <laughs> how much do you want to be in my conscious mind? You know, how much of it do you want? And I was really honest when I was asking, I was just curious. And what I understood in my heart was, on the days that I could stand in front of my closet and just grab something and put it on and go and be good. I did not need him in my conscious awareness at that moment. But if I stood there and I was vacillating because I was concerned or I felt intimidated or I wasn't sure, whatever, that's where he wanted to come into my conscious awareness and help me. So it's not mm -hmm. like he wants us to pause every second of every day to see if we should take another breath or blink or things like that, or even choose clothes. But he does any time that we feel a ripple of uneasiness. That's where we get to call him into our conscious awareness. He's never not with us. He's always with us. But our conscious awareness is often much without him. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the analogy that I love is the breathing, the air of prayer, life, like a dolphin breathes. So you think of a dolphin is a water dweller, but an air breather. The dolphin lives underwater but it has to come up every five minutes or so for air, or it will begin to suffocate. So the way God built us as humans is we are earth dwellers, but we are prayer breathers. We need to come up for air every few minutes, or we will begin to spiritually suffocate. And if you haven't been doing that on an ongoing basis, you won't even know that the, a lot of the stress and anxiety you're feeling is because you're not praying enough. You're not tapping into God's a presence with you consciously. So going back, I mean, my 911 is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And whenever I have any kind of ripple of trouble, I just am starting to call his name and starting to breathe air of prayer and inviting him into whatever is going on in my life. And I think that that's the key. Wow. I, I've got to just restate that dolphin analogy. Such a great analogy. So we are earth dwellers, she said, but we are prayer breathers. Is that yeah. how you said it? Yeah. I did. So, and you know, uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, what a, what a great analogy. I also love how you pointed out something so practical, like picking out your clothes. I have friends who said, oh, Jesus picked my curtains out today. And I, yeah. you know, sometimes that's befuddling, but that you mention, okay, anytime we have just a little bit of anxiousness, anxiety, right. or maybe fear or concern or something, something that's unsettling in us. That's when we can, ha we have the opportunity to invite Jesus into that scenario with us or the spirit and, yeah. and ask for guidance, ask for help, or just kind of lean into him in, in that instance. So that's a really, that's a powerful analogy to think that we also just kind of he's weaving in and out of our lives, just in and out, in and out, in and out. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think the key is, the key is that he is completely stable. Um, as we do this conscious awareness of him thing, we, th we think that he's like high when we're high, low, when we're low like that. And he's not, mm -hmm. he is completely, he is the rock on which we stand. But the problem that we have kind of like the dolphin is that we're living down here on right. earth. And so we get so consumed with what's going on around us and our brains are very focused on what's right in front of us or what just happened or whatever. And God's asking us to live from heaven down. So if you think of Ephesians 2, 6, where it says we are seated in the heavenlies with Christ, that's a present tense verse not later we get to go to heaven later our our heavenly bodies will be in heaven but right now our spirits are seated with christ in the heavenlies which is an astounding fact that we as christ believers get to live from heaven down so then we think about this this prayer analogy again and we're like yes actually we are in heaven getting air then we come down 
we do a little work here, we go up for air, come back down. And you, I, I love the dolphin analogy because they're so playful, right? When they're right. in the air, oh my goodness, they're jumping, they're twisting, they're having so much fun. And so that is the, that is the heaven on earth that we get to experience while we're here on the way to heaven forever. Mm, that is just a perfect analogy. I love it. And I want to kind of keep going in this same vein. And I'm wondering if you could share some practical tips and, and you've kind of dabbled in that just a little bit, but in the other practical tips, something that you do every day, maybe, or part of your devotional life, uh -huh. part of just how you process your life day in, day out, that would help yeah. you to walk in that kind of renewed state of being or you know the bible tells us to as to take every thought captive yes but also to be transformed by the renewing of our mind but what do you do to really step into that mind renewal anything practical yeah. come to mind yeah i just want to encourage you to um start adopting as many new daily practices as you can that press you farther into the conscious awareness of God's presence with you. And he is always with you. And I think that's where we kind of, we feel like he leaves, but he never leaves. And so as our, as our habits begin to uh, remind us frequently throughout the day, I know for years, I would t pick a phrase or a word like total dependence or um, mm -hmm. every thought, uh, things like that. And I would post it for a year. I'd post it everywhere above the kitchen sink on my visor, you know, on the kitchen bathroom mirror like that, you know, and, and words like that. I also started, um, I read, I think the first thing that I did in, in my pathway here was to remove any kind of magazines or whatever from the bathroom, from the lavatory and put in there uh, my utmost for his highest by his old chambers mm -hmm. and a couple other devotion books like that. So that even in those pods, moments, I was reminding my conscious mind of the truth that God never leaves me or forsakes me. He is always with me. And so now to the point where I mean, I wake up, I don't use an alarm uh, since 1997. I have not used a clock or an alarm clock. I let Jesus wake me up and he orchestrates everything. So um, I just wake up breathing him's name. I kick into the Lord's prayer, a very personalized version mm -hmm. that starts with good morning, daddy. And I'm so glad you're up in heaven and not stuck down here. You have perfect perspective compared to my limited vision you know I, I personalize that i get up as i'm as i'm running on the elliptical i am praying through the names of god i'm praying for the women of the world country by country i'm just focusing on jesus as i'm taking my shower and getting dressed i'm putting on the spiritual armor and it goes like that i have a 20 minute timer next to my desk that if i'm not in a meeting like this i have that go off every 20 minutes just to remind me to pause a moment and remember <laughs> I am in the heavenlies with Jesus. I am here working, but I am seated in the heavenlies with Christ. Is there anything you want me to think about right now? And so as we start to develop these lifestyle habits that press us into Jesus, we'll be able to more consciously uh, carry him in our minds. And that's you know, the change. The change that makes is that it's what's coming into my conscious mind that is what's being submerged into that bottom part of the iceberg that's down there. And that's affecting everything going forward, which is why he wants us to be transformed in the mind. Not just so that up here in our conscious thoughts, we're okay, but down here in our deepest souls, we're mm. okay. We're speaking truth to ourselves in the dark places. Mm. We're bringing light into the dark. Mm. So tell me this, because it's just fascinating to me, really, Marnie, and I love how you describe it. And even the details of your morning routine, it sounds just glorious to me. It and is. It's yeah. Do you do up. that every day? I mean, every single <laughs> really, day. Really, really yeah. pretty much every day. I mean, wow. it, it, it will have, there will be, there will be times of upheaval. Um, a, a lot of times when I'm traveling, it becomes a different, um, a different routine. Uh, but when I'm at home, when things are in a steady flow, and I think we all find that there are seasons, like I call them new baby seasons, <laughs> where mm -hmm. you're not getting any sleep and everything's just, you know, upside down, topsy-turvy, and it's a season. But if those seasons turn into now my everyday life experience, if I'm still acting like I have a new baby and the baby's two, 
something's wrong with this picture, right? Yes. So, yes. and that's what I loved about the analogy of the dolphins because First Thessalonians 5, 17, that says pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. That verse used to drive me nuts. It's like, how? I have to use <laughs> my brain for other stuff. And so when I understood that it's a consistency, not an every second thing. And that's the same with my relationship with my husband. Just right now, we are in different states. Uh, he's, you know, he's in our home state and I'm in a different state. And is my relationship with him exactly the same when we're apart? Nope, it cannot be. However, right. is there the consistency to the relationship that makes both of us know we're fine? We're fine. We're going to be yes. back together in a moment, right? right? And that's how it is with prayer. That's how it is with routines. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about becoming religious about it. Or just mm -hmm. consider consistency. What do I can, mm -hmm. if you were to guess, if you were to guess what I would do this morning, would you guess that? And if people would guess that, if your children would guess how you would respond, you are being consistent. Wow. That's so good. And There's a lot I of freedom in it. Yeah, I can see why you're a mentor, Mar Marnie. I, you, such a good fit for you, wasn't it? <laughs> it is. It's that who profession. I am, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, you explain things so nicely also. But before I put you too high on the pedestal, because I'm just like, I've got, I'm getting you way up there now. Can, <laughs> well, can yeah. you, <laughs> well, can you, you know, and, and I love the the joyful joy. I love that yeah. aspect because it's very apparent. You know, I can talk to you for five minutes and already see it on your face and hear it yeah. in your voice. And and I'm attracted, obviously, to people who live their lives like that. But I also know that just to keep things, you know, to open, kind of shine the light in a different way. You've had so many hardships and challenges in your life. But have you ever had a season and what another great analogy with the baby? Because some, some of us are acting like we've had a baby and the baby's probably a lot older than two even. And yeah. And yeah, we need still to, there. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we may need to yeah. do a little soul searching there and a little bit more work, but what would you say, you know, how do you really battle any kind of negative thinking or God limited thinking, or how have you historically done that? Was there ever a season of your life where you're like either angry at God or upset or just maybe feeling abandoned yeah. or just sure. in left field or, you know, maybe distant from him and then not doing yeah. the dolphin jumps and enjoying yeah. this life on right. earth? Right. Any, right. could you give us a little sneak peek into how that was for you and how you walk through that? Yeah. There was a season, I, there were so many, I, you know, I have to limit it down, uh, sure. but there was a season where I was just trying so hard to please God. I was just trying so hard and I would mm -hmm. get up every day and I would just run to the battle line and I would just go at it. And, and it seemed like it was just, I was failing and failing and like things weren't um, working out and I would just kept feeling and feeling like I was just missing the mark and not pleasing God and not pleasing others and not helping. And I just was so confused by the whole thing. All I wanted to do was just to please Jesus. And, and I remember there came a day I called a girlfriend and um, they were going through a really hard time. There were several children in the family. And I just said, I just said, could I bring dinner out tonight? I would just love to bring you guys supper tonight. And we spoke for less than 10 minutes. And at the end, she was crying and she was saying out loud to me, it's just so hurtful to me that you would, that you would, uh, that you would talk to me about this and that you would do this. And I got off the phone so confused. I was so mm -hmm. confused and it was a pattern. And I was like, God, I, I am done. I'm done trying to help, trying to serve, trying to do anything. And I remember just being kind of at the end, uh, what's end really of my own ideas of what I could do to help people. And uh, I adopted a phrase at that time and it really changed my whole trajectory going forward. But I just, I just adopted this saying and I said it every morning for at least a year. It was longer than a year. And then at some point I was okay to get up without saying it, but before I'd get out of bed, for that season, I would just say, God, the only reason I'm going to get out of bed today is because you're going to take my mistakes, my missteps, and my misspoken words, and you're going to turn them into beautiful flower gardens 
And that's why I'm going to get up today. And I had to come to the point where I didn't have to be successful. I didn't have to say it right. I didn't have to do it right. I didn't have to be approved of. I didn't have to have anybody's pat on the back. If I had one person, God, if he was okay with me, I would be okay with me. And it changed everything. And I stopped the people pleasing thing. And I, st- I mean, I'm sure none of us ever stop it completely, but I mean, I really had to let that go. And I just had to say yes when he called me to do something and not worry about how it looked. That's very difficult for us to do. We're we're very much into uh, getting approval from others and making sure that everything's okay. I I like all my ducks in a row. That's how I like my ducks. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. it's hard for me when God asks me to step out of that and just trust him. But it opened up then the opportunity for him to use me in newer and bigger ways which I never could have done if I would have been sitting around waiting for everybody else to approve and applaud my every move. And it allowed me to do now what I'm doing, which is just beyond comprehension for me, a little girl who couldn't read. Right. Yeah. I'm trying to process even what you just said, Marnie. So it was that one conversation where you were trying to be helpful, right? And you're like, let me just come over and bring you a meal and let's yeah. chat together and connect something that yeah. would be so supportive. I mean, in exactly. all, every yes. way we turn it yep. really, yep. but for whatever reason, she took that in, in a way that was yeah. contrary she to was what just, you intended. But she was yeah. just broken in her own, in her own space of sadness and grief. Right. And she didn't experience my heart. She experienced right. something from her past and we gotcha. don't get to actually choose that. For people right we don't we right. don't get to choose that how they receive what we give exactly and so yeah. from there it was this moment where you're like oh my word i'm i'm just done because yeah. kind of what i'm doing and even my best intentions aren't really working here so would you yeah. say that was just a complete moment of surrender for you it was it really was and i mean i have countless stories now I, of just saying yes to God in the most crazy situations. I remember one day I was going around, uh, I had made individual invitations to take to each uh, lady that was, we were st- restart a Bible study that we had stopped mm-hmm. over summer break and we're going to restart. And I had the itinerary so I could go and personally give each of them mm. this beautifully decorated cookie that I had made for them. And, mm. and, um, and I knew, you know, I knew their schedules enough to know if they worked or whatever like that. And there was one particular gal that I was going to go out and visit. And I knew she would get off work. Then she'd pick up her kids from daycare and then she'd go home. And uh, so I, I had her kind of toward the end of this list. Well, I'm getting ready to take a right to go to this other person's house and and I hear in my spirit go out there now and and I was like I can't she's not home so I get, get ready to take her I've got my blinker on now and I'm moving into the turn lane and I hear go now and I'm like but she won't be home. and then I heard it again three times go now and I thought you know what okay I'm gonna just go and yeah. if I miss her if I miss her you know well I get out there and it was out in the country a little way and I uh, drive down this real long driveway and here she comes in her truck coming out she's leaving right then If I would have waited even five minutes, I would have totally missed her. I had to get her right then. Well, she pulls up next to me in our truck. She rolls down the window and she goes, what are you doing here? And I said, hi, so excited to see you. Um, I just came to invite you to come back to Bible study. I know you missed, you know, some in the Springs, but I'd love to have you come back. We're starting up, you know, next week or whatever it was. And, And she goes, yeah, but why are you really here? And I said, um, that was really why. And she goes, no, I want to know why you're really here. And I was like, um, yeah, I, um, I, I just, I miss you. I want you to come back. She goes, you don't remember. And I said, what am I supposed to remember? And she goes today, one year ago today, I sat at your kitchen table and I received Jesus as my savior. It's my birthday. And I said, you know what? I didn't remember that, but God did. And he sent me out here (laughs) to invite you to come back. And she said, she said, you know, I had really pretty much fallen away there for a while. She said, but I can only tell you this, that since trusting Jesus as my savior, the sky is bluer and the leaves are more green and I will come back. So all I know is that I want to say yes, even when it doesn't make sense. 
even when it doesn't make sense at all to my logical mind, even if somebody gets really upset with me in the moment, right. <laughs> I just want to say yes. I just want to mm-hmm. say yes to Jesus every single time. Mm. I love that story. And it, it makes me think of how I long to be attentive to the spirit and the promptness yes. of the spirit, because you, you know how busy we get Marnie, we get yeah. so productive. Yeah. I like to say productive because then I feel <laughs> a little bit better, but we are yeah. consumed with right. this, right. that, and another thing. And it's easy to be dismissive of those prompts that we, that are there because he's with us and he is prompting. And yes. sometimes, you know, we can miss that. And I don't want to miss that. How would you say that you, you best walk with the spirit in that way? Stay in tune with him. How do you do mm. that? Uh, do anything intentional? I know you have your prayer time. You have your start time each morning. You yeah. are even asking God and dialoguing with him throughout the day yeah. saying, you know, constantly touching base, so to speak. Yeah. But is there anything else that you might, that you can think of that helps you to just be still before the Lord and really listen or receive those promptings and hear them? Yeah. It's um uh, in my book, Flow Through Vessel, I talk about the trust levels with God mm-hmm. and it's, it comes down to this. Do I, do I really trust that he loves me, that he's there for me, that he cares if I lose my keys? Do I trust if he cares if my house gets blown away by a hurricane? Do I trust that he cares and that he really wants to know about it all? Because that's the reason we pull back from a human. We pull back from a human because we feel like we're being a burden or because we don't think they can help. Maybe they don't want to help. Um, or maybe if they can, maybe we feel like they've already given us so much, we wouldn't dare to ask for more. Uh, we have all kinds of reasons why we pull back, but when we fully trust God, that he is who he says he is and that we are who he says we are, then that relationship flows very beautifully. Kind of like, if you think about your relationship with a best girlfriend, excuse me, because a best girlfriend, you are, I mean, my best girlfriend one time called me at at midnight and said, can you and Dave come over? There's a squirrel running around my house. And and a squirrel had gotten into her house and her husband was out of town and she felt free to call us at midnight. (laughs) You know, I mean, it's like a best friend you're willing to do that with. And see, when God becomes that best friend to us, it's no longer a challenge of if we do it or how we do it. It's just that we do it Mm. because he becomes the natural breath. And that's what I would just Mm. encourage you guys to just you know, the, the name of God, Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, is really just an inhale, exhale. Right. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. from the first time we took a breath, he wanted to be our everything. And it is us who limits him, us who says, oh, he wouldn't be interested in this, us who says, I definitely don't want him to be part of this part of my life, us who says things like that. It's never him. He's always wanting to be closer to us. So I think just the more that you understand who he is and who you are, and I do have that at YouTube, I have a whole, it's called the A to Z, the names of God and who I am in Christ. And it's like a 12 minutes or something like that, but it goes through the alphabetically, it just goes through just hundreds. And it's just really powerful to listen to that. I try to listen to that every day, um, just myself and just be reminded that, that he is my chief and my cornerstone and my creator and my counselor and my comforter. He's my father and my friend and my Abba and my Papa and my Baba and my daddy. And, you know, it just goes on and on and on. And uh, as, as we actually embrace that truth more and more, then the relationship becomes just more and more authentic and natural. And that's how it's supposed to be. Mm, I love it. I absolutely love it. And I have a very easy question for you to close. And then just one other question, (laughs) but this is going to be an easy one. And it's about gratitude. What Mm. role does gratitude play in your thought life and in your spiritual health? Yeah. So if you think of uh, Psalm 100, we enter into his courts of thanksgiving and into his presence of praise. If you are not grateful, um, there, it's very difficult for you to truly experience God at all. Mm-hmm. Um, it, our relationship with him starts with gratitude. We recognize that we are a sinner and the only way we're saved is by grace. And that, thank you then, gratitude is just all we have to give to him. So absolutely, it is the core foundation 
of our relationship with God is gratitude. And as we just let that overflow into all areas of our lives, then it becomes the core foundation of our relationship with our spouse and with our children and with our parents and with everyone in our lives. We just recognize all that they are to us and who they are to us and thank God for them as well as thank them for them. And it changes everything. Yeah, I agree. I think gratitude really, it's a mindset that to me is is the linchpin. Even if you look at how David wrote so many of the Psalms, he started yes. by praising God and being yeah. thankful. And then in the middle, yeah. he kind of did his griping and grumbling, <laughs> complaining, pouring out his soul, his feelings, his yep. emotions, yep. acknowledging them. But then he always bookmarked it on the tail yep. end Absolutely. with acknowledging who God is right. and right. thanking him for the many blessings. Yep. So Wow. I knew that would be an easy question for you, but <laughs> yeah, in addition to YouTube, tell us a little bit how everybody can reach out to you, contact you, get your 14 books, I think is the number now. So. Yeah. Yeah. So over at Marnie.com, just my name, M-A-R-N-I-E.com. We've got a whole mentorship program over there, free group coaching available to you. So just go ahead and register mm -hmm. there and uh, get inside. There's a bunch of free trainings and resources there mm -hmm. as well as the books and other things. And then also if you uh, socially just mentor Marnie pretty much everywhere, YouTube or Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever. Yeah. Okay. And I will put all of the links in the show note as well, show notes and the YouTube description as well. So we so appreciate your time and your encouragement. You, you know, I call this the choose to think inspirational podcast, and you certainly have encouraged many hearts, I believe, and it's been quite an inspirational message. So we do appreciate you, Marnie, and thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, Victoria. My joy. You're welcome. Mm -hmm.